Hello, everybody, and welcome to the next edition of Cut It Out. I'm here with John Panazzo with Color Byte Software, and I'm Pete Wright with Canon. And we are here to talk about some new and more information about the cutting solution to hopefully answer some questions you have and enlighten you on some maybe potential issues you've had when you were using it and kind of guide you in the right path. As always, uh, once we get through with this, Leave any comments or questions you have regarding what we talk about and maybe topics that you'd like to hear more information about. So, John, today we are talking about the dreaded mark scan error. Oh, and yeah, I know that's the dreaded the, mark scans. Oh, that's one of the biggest questions I get. I'm getting a mark scan error. Why am I getting it? So let's jump right into that. I know you've got some some video to show us and yep. some things to talk about. And, you know, e even I don't know all the reasons why mark scare, scan error. I, I know... Uh, at least once a week, I'm on the phone with you. Hey, we're getting a mark scan error with one of my customers, and we tried these things and it didn't work. And then you'll try something else, and that'll fix it. And it seems like you have all the fixes. So uh, let's let's uh, let's hear what you got. Yeah, I think a lot of it's explaining, you know, how the cutter measures the paper, and we're going to go through that. And hopefully, it's going to all make sense, and uh, and people will have a, a lot less uh, frustrations as for you know when first starting out, I think as you've used the cutter and you, you start getting used to the the workflow of it, it, it becomes quite easy. But, you know, those first few times uh, not understanding what the cutter is trying to do and how it works, um, this should shed light on all of that. So let's go ahead and roll the video and then uh, we'll explain what's going on. All righty, here we go. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to look at the proper roller positions. And you can see, um, if you're looking at the cutter, this is your, your right roller position, right at the edge of the paper. And even though there's just one image on this sheet, notice that I've positioned the second roller at the very edge of the paper as well. And we're gonna come back out and watch what happens when we select three for sheet, and the cutter actually looks at those roller positions. So I'm gonna pause the video here and explain what just happened. So we, we chose three for sheet and the cutter started doing its thing. And the first thing it did was it went to that first roller position, it read it, and then it moved to find the second roller. See, the only way the cutter knows how wide the sheet of paper is, is by where you position those rollers. And the reason why we always want them positioned at the edge of the paper is so that we can auto find that registration mark. If we don't do that, then you have to manually find each registration mark. And we thought it was gonna be easier, especially for new users who have never used a cutter before, if, if we auto found the marks for them. And by doing that, you do have to follow the, the guideline of putting your roller positions at the edge of the media, regardless of whether you've used up all the media with images and, and whatnot. You can see that that left registration mark, you know, is only a quarter of way through this 24 inch sheet of paper. So, you know, if I position, which we'll show you in a, in a little bit, if I position my roller, you know, right on the outside of, of that registration mark by that blue tape, it's going to struggle to find where that registration mark is because we've already, when, when the print job was done in the software, we had a 24 inch wide sheet selected. So we already know that the paper's 25 inches wide, 24 inches wide, but the cutter doesn't. So, now, so you start John, to get one of this things, geometry mismatch um, if you don't follow the guidelines of, of what you should do. Does that make sense to you? Yeah. So one of the things I want to point out too, because there might be some people that are new to this that are, uh, you know, either considering the solution and haven't gotten it yet. So I just want to, you know, be completely transparent. Um, when we talk about the rollers on here, what you'll see are these blue lines above. So not only do those rollers that he was showing in the video have to be lined up uh, outside of the registration marks and 
closest to the edge of the paper, but they also have to be under those blue lines. Right. Uh, so what you'll see is those little blue marks. And the one on the right-hand side, it's really, really long. That's kind of your adjustment. So uh, depending on the size of the paper, you can use that one for adjusting to various sizes of paper. All the rest of them are about an inch to inch and a quarter long. Right. And if you were to take the paper out, uh, the pinch roller fits on a round bar. Uh, that it pinches up against, it holds the paper. And you would notice a grip area that's got kind of a cross hatch all the way across. Uh, those blue lines actually correspond with that grip area of that roller bar, uh, which that little gridded area, that textured area, is what the rubber pushes the backing of the paper onto to hold and move the paper. So those blue marks aren't random. They are specifically to line you up with something that you can't see once the paper's there. Um, so yeah. it's not just where you put the rollers on the paper in terms of uh, lining up with the paper. It's also corresponding with those blue lines at the top yes. as well. All right. So let's continue the video and we'll see that it's going to. It measured the width. It's measuring the length now. and. We're going to move on to another clip here and now we've moved those rollers to the inside so we got one on the edge but on the left roller we have moved it under the blue tape but we've moved it closer to the edge of the image just outside of the registration mark We're going to hit three for sheet and now watch the the cutter head it stops at that second roller it doesn't go all the way to the edge of the paper so the the graph tech only measures the paper by the position of that roller. And that's why it's important that you always put that that left roller on the on the edge of the paper. Now one go of the ahead things... and keep running this and you'll see that it's going to go ahead and this is the first case and it go ahead and finds all the registration marks. And once it's found them, it starts initiating the cut job. Now, now on the no second example, now, it's going to struggle. It mm -hmm. it doesn't know where that registration mark is, and it's searching for it, searching for it, searching for it, and then it's just going to give up and throw a mark scan error. Now, you had said, and in, in I think you could tell visibly, that the image itself has actually moved further from the edge of the paper on right. this one. So in some scenarios you may not get a mark scan error if you haven't moved the image over because it may still find it. And may still, still find it, it. right. Well, let me over. explain what's actually going on in the algorithm. So the, the algorithm works like this. It We know that we printed on a 24 inch wide page setup in image print. And now we've put the paper into the cutter, the sheet, and it's measured the width and it's coming up less than 24 inches. So what the algorithm does is it looks at the width of the paper, divides that by two, and then through the co coordinate system, we know where that first registration mark is supposed to be. Now by shortening that page, by moving that roller inside, when we take the width that the graph tech returns, the width that it thinks the paper is, which is much narrower now, wide. we divide that by two, we no longer know where that registration mark is. And mm -hmm. that's why it can't find it. Mm -hmm. So it's going to throw a mark scan error. Now, when that mark scan error happens, we can manually set it, which I'm going to show you what to do right now. Wait for it to throw this error here. Okay, so it's thrown the error, and it's going to say, what do you want to do? Mark scan error, retry. We're going to hit one to retry. And now using the arrow keys on the pad there, we're going to position, and I have the knife holder out so you can see right down through it. We're going to position the knife right in the center of that first registration mark. Yeah, and I always tell everybody that you should pretend, when they have to do this, pretend that first registration mark is the mouth of Pac-Man, right, and you're trying to put the dot right in its mouth, That's right in the mouth. So yeah. once we get that position there, we're going to hit Enter on the keypad, and right away, it's going to know where that registration mark is. So it finds it, 
and now it can continue on with the cut job. Basically, as simple as it gets to how to load the paper, you know, following the proper steps, and you should have success every time. Now, there are some other issues that, that we've talked about and people can run into, um, especially, you know, it has to find all four registration marks. And a lot of times it may fail on the second one or the third one. And the reason for that is typically too much curl in the media. So if the media is not sitting flat on the platen of the cutter and it's pushing up on that cutter head, it's gonna have trouble reading that mark. Mm -hmm. And so if that happens, the easiest thing to do is to reverse roll the sheet, try to get it flatter, insert it in and retry the cut job. Yeah, and, and you will see that a lot, especially if you're at the end of the roll. Uh, and, right. and I've actually gone through and made my own personal custom decurlers to help with that. And you'll also see scenarios too, where one of the things that the device happens and we can cover this on a future um future video but one of the settings that the ce 7000 series has is the ability to raise and lower the head height because when you get to where the paper has a lot of curl to it you can experience where you get scratching so as the blade right. uh, moves around and it's looking for the registration marks or it's moving from cut to cut yeah uh, unfortunately also... though pete that that selection in the in the arm setup of the of the cutter is only for the head height while it's cutting mm -hmm. it doesn't actually for some reason and it's i don't know why graph tech did this it doesn't raise the head height for everything like that initial setup for for you know measuring the width and the the length of the page and so if you have a lot of curl you may get a knife scratch in that and so you know what I tell people all the time is just if you've got a lot of curl, if you sit that sheet on a on a table and it curls up on its own, you've got too much curl, right? You need to reverse roll that, um, you know, let it sit for a few minutes, take it out, and then <clears throat> you should be okay cutting it. Yeah, because like you said, sometimes that curl will be so significant that it's too close to the sensor and the sensor can't read it as well. Yeah. Uh, but there and, are things you can do and there's ways to work around it and there they're, they're problems that are really generated more by the hardware than the software. It's yeah. not something software related, yeah. but you know, you're kind of at the mercy of it. So right. the, the, now on the larger cutters, it's not an issue because they have additional pinch know, roller. four to five pinch rollers, but on a 24 inch cutter, you only have two. Now you and I made a, a little contraption and you, you know, if anybody's watching really close, they probably saw it in the video. It's a little plastic arm that mounts on the back rod of the cutter and uh, attaches with just a simple rubber band. And it just applies enough pressure down on the paper to keep it flat. And, uh, you know, we we made a bunch of those, you and I, and, and we do have those available if anybody wants them. It's like 15 bucks plus shipping. Um, you know, give us a, a contact at uh, colorbytesoftware.com. Just, you know, send us an email and and uh, we can arrange that. But uh, uh, other than that, you follow those simple rules and, and you should pretty much eliminate all mark scan errors. Mm -hmm. Perfect. All right. Well, John, thanks for, uh, th that's great information. It, it's really, uh, I think, hopefully gonna resolve a lot of issues that people run into. It, it's one of those things that when you first get your machine and you first start, you'll run into a handful of little things that can be discouraging. You're like, oh, what am I doing? And realistically, it's funny when you first start, something that's very small and very simple seems like Mount Everest. Right. Uh, and then when you hop on the phone with John or myself or, you know, one of the technicians over there and they say, oh, no, you just do this. And it's like, it's so simple. But in our minds, a lot of time we build it up to Mount Everest before we ever get on that phone call. Right. Uh, and no, there's just a handful of little things like that that, they're hardware related that the software is going to feel like it. The software is doing so. It's not the software, it's the hardware. And the yeah. software just can't react to things that you need to make a minor adjustment. And it's a simple adjustment. But once you understand those things, you're like, okay, I get it now. Yeah. So understand that most of the time when you run into something, it's going to be something very, very simple. 
don't hesitate to pick up the phone and call and or email. John, what's the email for customer service with you? Uh, support at colorbytesoftware.com. Yeah, so just shoot an email over there and uh, uh, you'll get hopefully a quick answer that will resolve for you. I mean, these are usually pretty simple things. Yeah. Uh, and we're going to continue putting videos out like this. I mean, if you've run into something like this that has been a problem for you, put it in the comments, ask us, let us know so we can address it. I mean, the whole goal of this entire vlog series is number one, to educate you on the things that you could do that maybe you didn't know, but also number two, to help resolve issues and problems and make your user experience better. And the only way we can address all of those things is if you're telling us exactly what you need to know. Right. So leave it in the comments, let us know what you want to hear. And John and I'll do this. We try to do this every single week. Sometimes uh, we, we miss a, a few days, but we try our best to put something out every week for you. And we appreciate your watching. So yeah. thanks for joining us on another episode of Cut It Out. John, anything else from you today? Uh, that's pretty simple. And we'll see you next time. We'll see you next time.